everyone, and welcome to our video on evaluating limits where we have rational functions. So we went through a process of finding the limit. So the first step is to always just plug in the value like we did in number one and two and three. Um, and if we get something strange, like in number three, we, we might be done with it. It might be a does not exist. Or like in number four here, if we get a zero over zero, so we, we tried to plug in the three value into all those X's and we got a zero over zero. What that means is we usually need to simplify the original expression before we plugged in the three. Or we might need a calculator to help us. All right, so what we're going to do, so that, that's this number two. So rational functions, so a rational function means a big fraction like number four and number five. What we're going to do is try to factor it and see what happens. Okay, so let's factor. Okay, so we're going to factor this before we simplify. Okay, so let's factor. And I'm just rewriting. Okay, so I've got my big fraction. Okay, so I'm trying to factor the top. I use the guess and check method. So I know trinomials factor to be two binomials. And then my focus is x, the x squared. And I know x and x make x squared. And then I'm thinking, well, what times what is 21? That gives me a positive 4 when I add them up. Okay, so I can do those factors to the side if I need to. So I'm just thinking of anything times anything for 21, and it's 1 and 21 and 3 and 7. Well, 3 and 7 multiply to make 21, and if I choose positive 7 and negative 3, those add up to be positive 4. So it looks like I should do minus 3 and positive 7 for the factoring. And then in the denominator, and then we should check it, it does work when we FOIL this out. Okay, so always check with FOIL. I'm going to uh, save those steps, or I'm going to skip those steps to make this video not too long. But let's continue factoring the denominator. So just like the numerator, I know that it should factor to be two binomials. Again, my focus is the x squared, and I know x and x make x squared. And then I'm thinking, okay, I have 15 here. I need the factors of 15. Again, I could write them all out, or you, if you're comfortable, you could just start plugging things in right away. I need the factors of 15 that need to add up to 2. Okay, so that looks like it's 3 and 5 if I make the 5 positive and the 3 negative. Okay, so those multiply to give me the value at the end, and then I just can insert them into my binomials. So I have x minus 3 and x plus 5 down below. And then we can say, oh, these would cancel out because they're the same thing divided by itself. So those cancel to make 1 on both the top and bottom, but we don't need to show 1 on the top and bottom unless that was the only thing left over. What we need to show is, is, is the leftover. So we will have the limit as x goes to 3, fraction bar. Left up top is x plus 3. Left down below is x plus 5. Okay, notice I'm still writing the limit. Now that I've simplified it, though, I'm going to plug that 3 value in. Okay, so I'm going to do that in red. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that into those x's. And I'm just setting up the blank placeholder before I switch colors. Okay, so I'm plugging 3 in. So in the numerator, I have 3 plus 7. In the denominator, I have 3 plus 5. And then 3 plus... And again, no, notice I don't have my limit anymore because I'm, I'm now doing it. 3 plus 7 is 10. 3 plus 5 is 8. This is a regular number. They would probably want us to simplify. Notice those both divide by 2. So we would have 5 divided by 4 or 5 fourths for a final answer. Okay, so that would be the limit. All right, let's try another one. So let's let's try another factoring problem. And again, you could check these with the calculator. So if we plug these in, so I had a previous video over here that involved that one. Okay, so you could, you could plug it in and, and also take a look at it. I'm going to do a calculator in a different video, though. So I'm doing these all just by hand. All right, so number five. Again, first thing you want to do is just see what happens if you plug in four. So I'm going to do that right here. So I'm plugging in four into those x's. I'd have 4 squared minus 4 times 4 over 16 minus 4 squared. 
Well, 4 squared up above is 16. 4 times 4 is also 16. 16 down below. 4 squared is still 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. 16 minus 16 is 0. Okay, so that means we're not done with the problem. So again, if it's just a regular old number, we would be done. All right, that means we need to simplify. So again, it's really just, it, it, it's a rational function. So a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So that means we really should just factor first. So I'm just rewriting it out, but setting up what I'll need to set up. So big fraction bar. Now up above, let me bold this. I only have two terms. And notice that there's an X in common. So it looks like I should just factor X out, which would leave me with X minus four. And then in the denominator, notice I have two terms, but there's nothing in common in both. However, there is the minus. This is that case of the difference of squares. So when you have two terms with a minus in between, it usually factors to two binomials. And you're focused on that 16 and saying, well, what times what is 16? Well, four is, so four and four. And then you just need to change the signs, do one minus one plus. It doesn't matter the order. And then you're thinking, well, what times what is x squared? Well, x, x times x is x squared. And again, we could double check these with foiling and factoring or, or multiplying to make sure our factoring is correct. They are good. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I see, well, these two are are similar to each other, but they're not identical. Okay, so to cancel, they have to be identical. So we saw a couple examples in a previous video, but here they are again. And if they're pretty close to each other and they have just a minus in between, often we do a little trick here so that it's factoring out the negative. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this bottom one. I'm gonna factor out the negative. which means the four minus X is going to become, so I'm gonna take a negative out, and then I just switch the order, X minus four. Notice when this negative goes back in to double check, I would have a minus X, that's that one, and then I would have a positive four, that's that one. Okay, so it, it shows that it works, so I can do this, I can rearrange things. Okay, so let's rewrite it. So still I have the limit as x goes to 4, fraction bar, x. The numerator I, I said I wasn't going to do anything to, so I'm just leaving it as x minus 4. And then I'm using this rewrite, negative x minus 4. And then the other one I didn't do anything to, so I'll leave it as 4 plus x. But the reason we did that is because now we can simplify these two because they're identical. Okay, so now that they're identical, these cancel. So that's that's a one and that's a one. And then we'll rewrite it. So we have the limit as x goes to four. In our numerator, we're left with just x. In our denominator, we have negative four plus x. Remember, we don't need to really show the ones. You can if you want to, but I'm just showing that to say that's how they canceled. Now that it's simplified, we should be able to plug that 4 in. So we'll change those x's right there into 4's. And I'm just going to set up my placeholders. Okay, so it looks a little weird right now. Okay, so but there's plugging in that top 4 and then negative parentheses 4 plus 4 like that. Okay, so we, we plug those in. And then now we'll just do our order of operations. 4 is uh, in the numerator. 4 plus 4 in the denominator is 8. So this is negative 8. And then, well, 4 divided by negative 8, that would simplify to be negative 1 half. Remember, we usually move the negative to the top or to the front. Um, but you could keep it down below if you prefer. OK, so that's how we can factor um, to simplify these problems. OK, so these were rational. So polynomial over a polynomial. If we get a 0 over 0, when we first try to plug something in, it means it's usually a factor problem. Or again, we could plug into a calculator. Okay, so we'll, we'll save the calculator for like number 6. So we'll save that in a different video though. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.